What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Leo. Come to you guys with yet another video. So, um, um, Money in the Bank is this um, Saturday, and I wanted to give you guys my predictions for that card. Um, and we have five matches that are, are going to be on the card. Some have implications and everything like that. Um, so we're gonna get into those, but we're going. But comment down below. Let me know your Money in the Bank predictions. Which matches are you looking for? Who do you think will win the Money in the Bank ladder matches? And will we um, be crowning a new champion at that show? So let me know in the comment section down below. But we're gonna get into it with the first match for the Intercontinental Championship. We have Sami Zayn defending against Braun Breaker. Now last night they did have a segment where Sami Zayn says he wants Braun Breaker to take him to the limit. He feels like Braun Breaker's underestimated him. He feels like um he's doubting him and what he's capable of and then they had a brawl on um, Braun Breaker hit him with a spear and he got back up and he continued to fight against Braun Breaker and Braun Breaker put him down with another spear and then he held the championship and usually Go home math really shows that if you do stand tall on um, before a pay-per-view and if you're a challenger or whatever the case may be and you hold the title and stuff like that, it usually is an indication that you are going to lose. Um, with that being said, I do see Sami Zayn retaining the Intercontinental Championship. Um, I would love to see Braun Breaker, don't get me wrong, but I think they're probably going to continue this feud. If anything, I can see them trying to do a multi-man match um, for the Intercontinental Championship at SummerSlam with Sami Zayn defending against Braun Breaker, Sheamus, and Louis Kaiser because all four of those guys have kind of been somewhat intertwined over the last couple of weeks. So I can see that happening at SummerSlam. So if that's what they're building to, then I think we'll see Sami Zayn walk out. Still your Intercontinental Champion. The next match um, is a six-man tag team match. We have Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens versus the Bullet Line, or I like to call them the weekday of Solo Sokoa, Tama Tonga, Tangaloa, and or Jacob Fatu because we don't know which three will be um, facing um, Cody, Randy, and Kevin. Now, I'm gonna. This might come off as a little fantasy booking, and I um, want to thank Willie Does Wrestling, um, one of my favorite content creators right now. He, I was watching his prediction. He and he was talking about this match particularly, right? And he was talking about how if you look at the graphic, it looks like. Um, usually when we have like a six man tag and then another team has like an extra member, they usually make that person smaller in the render, but they made it seem, come off as seem like it's going to be a four on four match. So with that being said, I see a situation maybe on SmackDown, we see the return of Jimmy Uso coming back to get revenge on the bloodline and he aligning himself with Cody, Randy and Kevin and this becomes a eight man tag team match. I think that's the route that they're going in because I feel like all four of them are probably going to get involved unless you want to do this uh, three on three match and then we can have um, one of the guys on the outside, you know, pretty much causing distractions and stuff like that. Then we have Jimmy also come back that way at Money in the Bank. But I think this would be a great way to reintroduce him and everything like that and get him back in the fold and swing the thing. So I would love to see that happen. But if we're going strictly off what we're um, given, um, regardless of how they do it, I do think the Bloodline will win here. Because I think the Bloodline really needed to establish themselves as this new dominant force that we reckon with. I mean, we've been seeing them, you know, wreak havoc on different people. We've seen them take out Paul Heyman. And I think we're, they're trying to build them up as much as they can. Um, especially if they're going to be going with this Solo versus Cody Rhodes match at SummerSlam. They're going to have to get the win. And if I'm going to be honest, I think Solo pins Cody. That way we can officially set things up potentially for that championship match at SummerSlam. Even though I don't want it, if I had to pick, I would love to see Jacob fought two in that spot. But if we're going to do Solo, I think Solo needs to pin Cody Rhodes to set up that match at SummerSlam. And also, you know, have that little storyline where it looks like, you know, people could doubt Cody, could really Cody championship be in jeopardy here, even though it's really not going to, but you know, like they like to go that storyline and do things that way. But, uh, I do have the bloodline winning this match. The next match, um, the first of two money in the bank ladder matches. We have the men's ladder match. We have Jey Uso, Carmelo Hayes, 
Andrade, Chad Gable, LA Knight, and Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre won the quali- the last chance qualifying match, so to speak, or his qualifying match last night against Ia Dragunov and Sheamus. I definitely recommend go watch the match because that match was really good. That was re- They pretty much tore each other apart, really, and I loved it. I would love to see them kind of do a triple threat match with those three in the future once again because they, they really tore the house down. But if we're looking at the current landscape right now, I feel like what's going to happen, we're going to see, and this is kind of ties into the women's match, we're going to see one person win from Raw, one person win from SmackDown. And um, before I get into women's, I'm going to talk about the men's. But um, if we're looking at the current landscape, right, the way they, they've been setting it up, it looks like a Raw guy is going to win this. And I feel like they've been teasing it to say, well, if... Whoever it is, probably is going to have a same-day cash. I feel like at Money in the Bank, we're going to get a same-day cash in from the men. I have a small feeling that we are. Um, and it really just comes down to where did this match, you know, take place on the card. If this is going to be the first match on the card or maybe the last match or, I don't, or something like that. We don't know. We don't know the current placement of the card and what can be taking place where. But um, I'm going to go through the, the line. Like I already went through the lineup and I'm pretty much going to do process of elimination. Andrade, I don't think it's going to win. I think they haven't really gave him a lot um, for a lot of fans to really buy into the idea of him winning. Um, so I don't think it's going to be him. Carmelo Hayes, I don't think people would be mad at. I think he would definitely benefit by winning. But I think the way they're setting it up, it looks like he's going to be going after that u.s championship at some point down the line so if that's the case then i can see them wanting to hold off on him winning that money in the bank until probably next year and then you could probably do something with him and maybe he wins the briefcase there they could always do that um then we have another person we have ellie knight i think ellie knight would be a great great uh potential winner just because a lot of people wanted him to win last year but they didn't this would be a great way to um right that wrong and actually finally give it to him. And I think it wouldn't be a bad idea. Because if you look a couple of years ago. When Miz won. He was the US champion. And then he um, lost the US championship a little while later. And then he cashed in for the WWE championship. So if they wanted to go that route. They could definitely give LA Knight that victory. But let's be honest. I think LA Knight will be screwed over by Logan Paul. With, with LA Knight pinning Logan Paul to qualify for this match. I can see a situation where Logan Paul comes down there. And he costs um, LA Knight the match and then you could set up that match for SummerSlam because they have really been setting that match up for SummerSlam so I think if they're going to do that they want to set that match up that's how they do it Drew McIntyre a strong contender of winning I think with his story I think it would be kind of cool to see him with that briefcase and he can kind of rub it in you know um the people that that you know he felt like betted against him and everything like that. I feel like that would be a cool moment for him. But let's be honest. I think it's safe to say that CM Punk is probably going to cost him. Because they, I feel like they're going to set things up. Where it's going to be like Drew is about to unhook that briefcase. And CM Punk comes in and screws him again. And this will make the third time that Drew has been screwed over by CM Punk because he got screwed over at WrestleMania, allowing Priest to cash in. He got screwed over in his hometown uh, at Clash of the Castle, and now he got screwed at Money in the Bank. And you can set that match up for SummerSlam because I think that match is going to happen at SummerSlam. I really do. But I feel like people have been kind of throwing this idea out here. What if if CM Punk doesn't show up, right? But AJ Lee makes a shocking return to screw Drew McIntyre. And this would make sense in storyline because, you know, Drew, he took the um the bracelet with uh, Larry, um, CM Punk's dog, and AJ Lee on it. So I think in a hindsight, it comes off as disrespect. And pretty much, you know, with CM Punk being taken out for the time being and... AJ Lee might take it upon herself to go screw over Drew as revenge for taking the bracelet. And maybe she takes it back. And plus on Raw, after he won the match, he kissed it. That is the ultimate sign of disrespect. That is the ultimate sign of being a 
true definition of black force energy. And I have a feeling if Punk is not going to do it, AJ Lee is going to take it upon herself and go to Toronto and screw this man over. And that's going to make the crowd erupt. The crowd is going to be out of their seats if that was to happen. Let's be honest. So I do think Drew will, will be screwed over. Either it's going to be by CM Punk or it's going to be shockingly by AJ Lee. So I think he's going to get screwed over. Chad Gable, I think would be what I'm, I think that's the guy that I would want to see win it because I think if you look at the story that they've been telling with him and then the the uh, a, a cat, the Alpha Academy and then the Creeds and Ivy Nile, there's so many different, you know, components that can happen there, right? You can you have that segment um a couple weeks ago where Chad Gable was trying to get back in the good graces of Alpha Academy and pretty much Oda said, I don't want anything to do with you. We're done. We're done. That's it. And then he turns and then they, they segue into the Creed brothers and Ivy Nile coming up and approaching him. And then they ask him, you know, are you okay? And this was pretty much right after the Wyatt Six debuted that very next week. We had that segment. And, you know, the, the Creeds and Ivy Nile are saying, are you okay? And he says, no, I need some help. I can see a situation where Alpha, not Alpha Academy, but we pretty much see the Creeds and Ivy Nile, you know, pretty much turn heel and help him win that briefcase. And then maybe he can cash in on the world championship. But I think his story is still with that IC title. So I can see a situation where he does go in and decide to cash in for that. I don't know how I feel about that. But it, for him, I think it would make sense. Um, and then on top of that, you still have, you know, the Alpha Academy stuff still going. You have that story. There's two, He's pretty much involved in three stories right now. He's involved in the Alpha Academy story. He's involved in the Creed Brothers and Ivy Nile story and how that intertwines with each other. And then him pretty much being a victim of the Wyatt Six attacks. They have continuously been targeting him as of late. He's continuing to be a target. And I have a feeling that Wyatt Six are probably going to show up at some point during this match and cost Chad Gable this match. I can see them doing that. I feel like at some, I think at some point, way somehow the Wyatt Six will be a present uh make their presence felt on Money in the Bank this Saturday so if that if they're gonna do anything I can see it definitely being in this match especially after what we've seen with the whole segment from last night where why um Bre uh, Uncle Howdy or you know Bo Dallas you know they were talking about their mission anybody that's done their family and pretty much you know betrayed their family and you know used it to for their own amusement and their own glory they don't like that they don't they find that disgusting and they will you know pretty much hunt them down in the most brutal manner and until they're handled so i can chad able seems like he's the first of many that's going to be potentially in the wyatt six crosshair so i can see them coming in screwing chad gable and that's with that being said it comes down to one person that's jay uso i think jay uso will win i think honestly jay uso this is his final time to really, you know, live up to being main event Jey Uso because he 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 has everything, you know, he has his in-ring work might not be the best. He can his promos are good. He um his merch sells, the crowd loves him. I mean, he's on the poster, but usually when somebody's the when somebody's on the poster, it doesn't really work on their favor. Maybe this is their chance to kind of change that, the perception as, as far as how that goes. Um but I think Jey Uso with him having so many opportunities and coming up short, whether it's for the world title or the mid-card title, he's come up short with outside interference, right? And I really feel like they could really go in and have Jey Uso win here. And then this plays into the next match we're talking about. We're going to save the women's match for last. And this match is for the World Heavyweight Championship. We have Damian Priest versus Seth Rollins. And this has a stipulation. If Priest wins, Rollins can no longer challenge for the World Championship as long as Damian Priest as is champion. But if Rollins wins, Damian Priest must leave the Judgment Day. Now, on paper, right, on paper, people would say, you know, Damian should retain, right? And you have your right to, believe, to say that. But the way they have been booking it and teasing it, it gives me reason to believe that we will see Seth Rollins become your new 
world champion or we will get a money in the bank cash in because i'm not sure if if he loses the championship right if damian priest loses the championship would that still you know technically mean he has to leave the judgment day now i know it says if rollins wins but could there be a caveat if if priest doesn't walk out as champion he does not he he's long longer in the judgment day because they have been teasing this right they have they have definitely been teasing this we see in the segment i think last week where they made that stipulation and you know priest you know he was laughing it off and he said this is pretty much what you know hammered it home and this kind of segues into this week we had on last week priest says the judgment day need me a lot more than i need them and then later on that show we seen Liv morgan with the judgment day and she helped them win the tag team titles so now it's pretty much almost split to where we see we're seeing you know the split between the judgment day already because we're seeing everybody pretty much being you know okay with live being around especially with them with him with her coming out uh with them and helping them so she's in their good graces but not everybody she's not really in good graces with priests Dom, he's kind of in limbo. He's not really too sure what to do. And, you know, especially with what was, what, was, what happened last night. We've seen them, uh, Dom and um, Damien go to the Dutch Judgment Day locker room. They're talking, and they're talking about, you know, um, you have to handle this lift situation. And then Damien says, have you talked to Rhea? And Dom, he says, I did. And everything's cool. And then Damien caught it catches him in line because he says i just talked to Rhea, and everything's not okay and she's pissed um so it just saying he, he's caught in the line he says because damien says when are you going to actually start doing what you say you're going to do and and don took offense to that because he he didn't say it out loud but if you were paying attention closely he says you're starting to, you're, just, you're starting to sound like my dad at this point and then Damien says, like, what you say? And then Dom says, I can't say nothing. <laughs> he was scared. He didn't, he didn't want those problems that, that night. And then we have Finn and Damien talk. Um, and Finn, he's saying, you should be thanking Liv. He, um, you should be thanking Liv. Liv helped us become tag team champions. And in, for all honesty, since you become champion, it's changed you. It's changed you. And um, and, he, and he, he, he caught on to what was said um, um, with Damien last week, that was one of the things that I was looking forward to was the Judgment Day going to respond after what Damien did say last week about, you know, the Judgment Day needing him more than he needs the Judgment Day. So they caught on to that, especially for Finn. And then we had a segment later with Finn, Seth, and Damien. And then Seth, you know, says, Finn, you're jealous because, oh, Dom, uh, Damien, he's world champion and you're not. You're jealous because he's holding a championship that you wish you were holding. So he's getting under the, the the skin of Finn Balor, and what I think is going to happen, Finn is going to come in this match. Damien's not going to get up. He's not going to be too cool about it. And there's something that's going to happen where Damien loses the championship either because of a Seth Rollins, of be or because of a cash in. I think if Jay wins that that briefcase. I can see him cashing in that same night and becoming world heavyweight champion. I could see them maybe turn this into a triple threat. Maybe if they could. They could definitely turn this into a triple, uh, to a triple threat depending on where the money in the bank, for the men's at least, is going to be on the card. So then you have that come become a triple threat. You have Finn Balor screw Damien. And then either we get Finn and Damien without the title at SummerSlam or we get we're probably gonna get um Finn not Finn and Damien I already just said that we're probably gonna get Seth and Gunther for the world championship or they can potentially make this a triple threat and then you can have the, the potential turn there so I feel like it's either going to happen at Money in the Bank or SummerSlam but the way they're they're setting things up I can see a situation where Damien loses that championship. I think Finn Balor will play a huge factor into the reason why we see Damien no longer your world champion. And the reason he is no longer part of Judgment Day. And you can have the Judgment Day 
come down there and jump him, and that can lead to a Rhea Ripley return. So that's how I feel like that World Championship scene is going to play out. Now we're going to get to the women's match. We have EO Sky, Chelsea Green, Lyra Valkyria, Tiffany Stratton, Naomi, and Zoe Stark. And Zoe Stark won last night against Dakota Kai and um, Ivy Nile. I thought Dakota Kai was going to win because you can definitely you can continue that feud and tease this that they've been having with the, with the damage control as of late. So um, that, that's why I thought that. But they gave it to Zoe Stark. They have been trying to push her. They've been trying to give her something to do. Um, but as far I'm going to do process with Zoe Stark not going to win, in my personal opinion. Lyra Valkyria, I think Lyra and Io cancel each other out. So that's not happening. Naomi would be cool, but they haven't really given her a lot to do. But this would be something for her to do and really get a lot of people behind her. So, I, I wouldn't be mad at it. Um, so, But I don't think they're going to give her the briefcase. Um, then it comes down to Chelsea Green and Tiffany Stratton. Both of these women are the most deserving of the women's briefcase. Chelsea Green definitely fits the mold of what a true money in the bank contract holder can be a true heel that would do any and everything to pick her spot and become champion and i think people love her she's going to be in toronto she's going to be in canada the crowd is going to be pro chelsea in this match like i'm i'm telling you now that crowd is going to be pro chelsea just like how we seen la night last year people were pro la night in that match but that didn't happen and i don't think Chelsea will win. I would love to see Chelsea win. Don't get me wrong. And, I, and I'm telling this now. If either Chelsea or Tiffany win, I will be 100% fine with it. But I don't think they're going to give it to Chelsea. I think it is Tiffy time. I think they're going to give her the briefcase. I think they are telling the story with with Nia and, um, and Tiffy. They're probably going to set the story up kind of like they did Alexa and Nia a couple weeks, a, a couple years ago, where Nia wins at SummerSlam, right? And then Tiffy cashes in on Nia and becomes champion. And through that, you have Tiffy fully turn babyface. You have Nia be the heel. Because I think, if we're being honest, the crowd does not want to boo Tiffany Stratton. People want to cheer Tiffany Stratton. It was it was made clear as day. If you go back to Elimination Chamber early this year, people cheered her even though she was a heel and she was being presented as a heel. She was still being cheered. So I think through this, you can have her become a babyface because I think she would be a great babyface in my personal opinion. Then you can create an, a compelling storyline between the two based off the history and the teases and the partnership that they've been trying to have with the two then on top of that you know she's going to sell merch when she becomes money in the bank you if she's going through with this money in the bank idea with this pink briefcase that is going to sell let's be honest that will that will get i wouldn't say dry ratings but that would get people to buy that briefcase that's going to sell and that goes to the same thing with jay Uso. if he wins that briefcase and they have the, the yeet in the bank those two briefcases are going to sell both of those both Jay and Tiffy are like your top merch sellers on the men's side and women's side. So I think that's how they play those matches out. But comment down below. Let me know who do you guys have winning the Money in the Bank ladder matches. Do you, who do you have? Do you have, but see a potential title change on Money in the Bank? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to hear what you guys say. Have to say on the road to 250 subscribers, but the ultimate goal is 10K. When I do hit 10K. We'll do a giveaway. One of you lucky fans will have the opportunity to win a WWE Championship from W Shot. So, please go do so. Super hit that like button. Helps on the aggro. Helps my channel get pushed across the platform. So, more people can see what I'm doing here on YouTube. Super Rant Punch that post notification bell. So, another time I post a new video. Or some reaction video, rant video, live stream, any type of video. You can be in a loop of things when I do drop a video. And spirit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 250. Like I said, also we 10K. Takes three seconds out of the day to do those three things for me. Helps on the progression of my channel. So I appreciate everybody. Hope everybody has a great day, a great week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.